2240 Lakeview Road. Got it. Now, don't let anyone touch the body or anything around it. We'll be right there. Joe, send a squad car. Hello, Tracy. Tracy isn't here. This is Pat Patton. We'll try to find him, Pat. It's important. Homicide. 2240 Lakeview Road. Okay, I'll see what I can do. It's murder, he says. Does that mean Mr. Dick Tracy won't have dinner with me tonight at all? Oh, sure, sure, Tess, you'll eat. Mm-hmm, that sounds very much like something Dick said nearly four hours ago. Well, at least you got this far. This far? I'm now engaged to a major to a homicide squad. <laughs> Why didn't I fall in love with a retired businessman? I'll get Tracy. Maybe he can answer that one. Come on, Johnny, you might as well talk. Who robbed that payroll truck? Let me handle him, Tracy. I think I can make him talk. We're waiting, Johnny. Homicide, Dick. Just got the call. You better step on it. 2240 Lakeview Road. Murder, 9-11 Laurel? 9-11 Laurel? That's where I live. My mother. You said murder. My mother's there. What's happened to her? I gotta get to my mother. I've gotta find out who robbed that payroll truck. Who are you shielding, Johnny? I gotta get out of here. Who held up the truck? Flip Gordon. Your mother's all right, Johnny. But you just said that... The only way I could get you to talk and clear yourself at the same time. All right, boys, clean up Johnny and send him home. Tell the chief it's okay. And pick up Flip Gordon. Yes, sir. Dirty trick to play on the kid, but I knew he was innocent. That was the only way I could make him talk. And you gave me the idea. I must be improving. All the time. Hey, Dick. How about Tess? Holy smoke, our dinner date. She must be starved. Make yourself comfortable, Tess. will only be a few more minutes. But Dick, I... teacher named Dorothy Stafford. About 40 years old. Quiet, few friends. Lived a couple of houses down the block. Any trace of the murder weapon? No. The only thing we found so far is Miss Stafford's handbag. Who reported it? Mr. Hill, but he wasn't the first to reach the body. Oh, she's over here. Miss Stanley, this is Detective Tracy and Detective Patton. How do you do, Miss Stanley? Did you see anybody in the block before you found Miss Stafford? No. A friend drove me home from work and let me out on the corner. I didn't see or hear anyone until I got right here. And then these people started coming out of their houses. Just a few seconds earlier, it would have been me lying there. Nobody would have any reason to kill Miss Stafford. Could have happened to any of us. Only a fiend could have slashed it like that. Have one of the boys take Miss Stanley home. Get their names. All right. Miss Stanley? What's your name, Miss? Pat Chandler. at the Lyceum Hall. Say, that's where she was coming from when she got knifed. Twenty dollars and some silver. Well, that rules out robbery. The neighbors are right. We've got a maniac to find. Identification card. Balance of seventeen hundred dollars. No recent withdrawals. $500 in small bills and put in Street Sweeper's trash can. Corner of Lakeview and Ash at 8 tomorrow night. Splitface. I can spell better than that. He spells the important words, all right. Yeah, Mr. Splitface knows how to spell $500. Dick. Tracy? <sighs> what time is it? Why, it's a little late, Tess. It's almost 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? Guess that's all for tonight, Pat. We may as well go home.
one thing, it's another. Dick Tracy residence. Mrs. Carraway speaking. Who? Oh, hello, Mr. Patton. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of calling Mr. Tracy now. He didn't get home till 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. I'm sure he's exhausted. He's in a coma. He's in a coma. Oh, uh, just a minute, Mr. Patton. Just a minute. Morning. Morning. Hello, Pat. Dick. Anything wrong? The chief wants us over at the mayor's office. Too sweet. I'll pick you up right away. Mayor's office. I'll be ready. Mayor's office. Hmm. Junior had his breakfast yet? Oh, an hour ago. He's upstairs in his room, working on a very strange case. I'll see what he's up to. Junior, what have you got there? Something mighty funny happened around here last night. That so? Yeah, there was a prowler in the house. Anything missing? Yeah, plenty. Any clues? I'm afraid I'll have to fingerprint you. Hey, you don't suspect me. Mrs. Carraway says a lot of stuff is missing from the icebox. Yeah, they sure do. Look at these, Dick. You got me dead to rights, officer. You better talk. Might as well come clean. It'll go a lot easier on you if you do. And on your accomplice, too. How'd you know I wasn't alone? Lipstick. Ted? Yeah. But I'm taking the rap. It was too late to go to a restaurant, so we... We raided the kitchen. Oh, heck. You confess too easy. I thought this case would take me all day. So you could stay out of school? Let's go. Oh, good morning, Mr. Patton. Good morning. Oh, Pat, be right with you. we have got to hurry, Dick. Hi, Junior. Any new crimes? One, I've got to go to school. <laughs> well, land sakes, aren't you even going to have your breakfast? I'll get a cup of coffee downtown. Come on, Pat. Yes. Bye, Mrs. Carraway. Goodbye. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. What's happened? The mayor will explain. Here, Tracy, read this. Came special delivery a half an hour ago. Wrap up $10,000 in small bills and put in Street Sweeper's trash can at corner of Davidson and 9th Street. At 11 tomorrow night, it'll be slashed to pieces. Split face. The same handwriting and the same words misspelled. Well, if you know the handwriting, of course you can tell me who Splitface is. The man who killed Miss Stafford. Just a moment. Did your honor know Dorothy Stafford? Well, I, I can't recall. Why? Did she get one of these extortion letters? Yes. For $500. That's what's strange. An extortionist doesn't usually demand 500 from one victim and 10000 from another. You mean he'd operate in one bracket? That's right. Well, what are you going to do, Chief? Now, don't worry, Your Honor. We'll assign bodyguards to you immediately. Bodyguards? Those are the fellows that always shoot second. I guarantee your safety. You do? I suppose if you don't live up to your guarantee, you'll bring your resignation over to my funeral. Now, Mayor. Now, look. I only want one thing, and you know what that is. Split face. I've gone through every crank letter and extortion message in our files. There's nothing that even looks like the writing of this split face. Dug up anything more on Miss Stafford? Uh, one thing. Going through her personal effects and business papers, I kept coming on to the name of Wilbert Thomas. Who is he? Well, that's what's funny. I asked all her school teacher friends, and none of them ever heard of him. But he's in the phone book, and I've been calling him all night. Let's go out to his house. We can wait for him if he hasn't arrived by the time we get there. The number. Let's see what that dog 
was howling about. There's a car out there. That dog is in the next yard. Yeah. Evidently, nobody home there either. The Stafford woman. Throat slash, knife cuts, and face and chest. I'm only a couple of minutes late. Call headquarters. I want the neighborhood combed. Right. Look, he stepped in some oil in that driveway. When you phone, get the car and cruise around until you spot me. Right. He's taken refuge in your house. That's impossible. I've been home all evening. But come in and look around if you'd like to. This man slashed a school teacher to death. And committed another murder not far from here tonight. <laughs> I guess a crazy killer like that can give you police a lot of trouble. You never know uh, where or when he may get the urge to kill again. Let's take a look at the back. This way. I'll be right back. Stains on the carpet. A man named Jones lives here. I'll keep him busy in the study. Continue looking the place over. You're alone in the house tonight, Mr. Jones. Yes. My daughter is visiting relatives out of town. Our cook goes home every night. Would you sit down? Thanks. Very unusual for me to spend an evening at home like this. I own the Paradise Club. Did you ever know a woman named Dorothy Stafford? That's the school teacher who was killed. Yes. I never heard of her until I read about the murder. Did you ever hear of a man who calls himself Splitface? <laughs> no. Who is he? The killer. I'm concerned about your safety, Mr. Rollins. My assistant. I think we'd better leave a police guard with you. I don't think that'll be necessary. Apparently, you had this man cornered in my backyard, and he ran through the house to get away. He's not likely to come back. He's not in the house now, anyway. Find the thing, Dick. No weapons, no bloodstains on his clothes, and the shoes in the closet are all clean. Maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe he isn't, maybe he isn't. 
But right now, we're going back to the Thomas house. Hello, Dick. Hello, Manning. I thought I had him, but I ran second. Too bad. It's Thomas, all right. What'd you find on him? Usual stuff. Wallet, around 50 bucks. Medium price watch. Dick Tracy reporting. Oh, it is. Well, I was told Miss Lovelace was calling. I was afraid you wouldn't talk to me if I gave my right name. Did I apologize for last night? No, you didn't. But I suppose I'll have to forgive you. I wouldn't think I'm really forgiven unless you let me make up for it tonight. Tonight? Gee, that'd be swell. Good, Tess. I'll call for you early. We'll dine. We'll dance. Maybe we'll even look at the moon. You can't fool me for a minute, Dick Tracy. I know you're not going out for fun. You're going out for work. And if you examine the moon, it'll be for fingerprints. You're wrong, Tess. Work's forgotten. And besides that, I have something interesting to tell you. you. Know what? Tracy is crazy about you. What about your date with the mayor? The mayor? He's just a figurehead. Nobody pays any attention to him. That doesn't sound like you, Tracy. Pick you up at eight. So, I'm just a figurehead, eh? So no one pays any attention to me, huh? Of course not, Your Honor. I mean, won't you sit down? So my life's in danger and no one pays any attention to me. No wonder our citizens are being slashed to ribbons by some maniac. Your Honor, we're all doing everything possible. Have you forgotten if I don't put $10,000 in some trash can tonight that I'm going to join Miss Stafford and Wilbur Thomas in the morgue? We've checked the movements of Thomas. Thomas is dead. Have you checked the movements of this split face? That's what I want to know. We have a suspect. I've told the mayor about Owens. He wants us to arrest him. If we do, an attorney will get him out in a few hours. All we'll do is put him on his guard. Has your honor ever met Owens or Thomas? I may have. I meet lots of people. I'm a popular man. But remember, I expect action. And before 11 o'clock tonight. Looks like no soap. I've been standing here for three hours. My feet are killing me. You didn't really expect him to show up, did you? Why not? We put the package in the can, just as the note instructed. I don't think Splitface is especially interested in the package of money. You mean Stafford, Thomas, and the mayor were all marked for murder, whether they paid or not? Right. Don't have you, Stafford, got a note asking five on it. She didn't pay it and was killed. Thomas got one and paid a thousand dollars. He was killed. Sane or crazy, there's some central idea behind it. Some spring that ties all these people together. That's encouraging. What am I going to tell the mayor about tonight? Congratulate him on being alive. And ask him where he ever encountered Stafford, Thomas, and Seabones. We might as well go. the booking boys. That's all for tonight. I hope you made a reservation. No. It would only take a minute to call and I... Quiet. I didn't want anyone to know me here. Oh. Ah, oh, Mr. Tracy. Good evening. Oh, Jules. Uh, a table for Mr. Tracy. It's a pleasure to see you, Mr. Tracy. This way, please. I see what you mean. Known, unknown, I've known. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Rose around this evening? I'm not sure, but I'll find out, Mr. Tracy. Who 
is Mr. Owen? He owns the place. I ran into him last night. All right, stop being so mysterious and tell me why we're here. I'll let you know as soon as I find out myself. Mrs. Crazy asked me about your father. He did. All right. Good evening, Mr. Tracy. I'm Judith Owen. You were asking about my father? Why, yes. Oh, this is Miss... How do you do? I'm so happy to know you, too. I've been away for a few days, but when I came home this morning, my father told me about your visit to the house last night. Your father has good nerves. That experience would have terrified a lot of people, but he took it right in stride. I'm certainly glad you were there. But, but do you think it was entirely an accident that the killer ran through our house? That's what I've been asking myself. Where's your father now, Miss Owens? Uh, he's not here tonight. Is he at home? No. No, and right after he left, I, I saw a man walking through our garden. I was frightened, so I jumped in my car as quickly as possible and came right to the club. Would you let me have the key to your house? Oh, well, yes, of course. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. Do you mind waiting? Oh, no, you're not going to leave me here. Not me. I'd feel safer with you. I don't expect to find anyone around here now. I got her key so I could make a thorough search of the house while they're both out. Well, then I'll help you. <laughs> don't worry about being polite. You go first. Professor Linwood J. Starling, astrologist, doctor of the occult sciences. How long have you been up here? Time and space are beyond human conception. Cut out the double talk. I'm from police headquarters. Obviously. Well, I've been here since uh, darkness fell, meditating, communing with my soul, studying the course of the stars. 
Sagittarius. Did you see anyone cross this roof a moment ago? No. Oh, but I wouldn't have unless he flashed momentarily across the section of the heavens at which I was looking. You see, I'm a man who knows how to concentrate. Where do you live? All right, go ahead. Let's have a look at it. Any objections? None. Being a doctor of the mystic sciences, I'm used to the persecutions of the police. I'll bet you are at that. While you're amusing yourself, you won't mind if I return to my telescope. Oh, now the stars will be there a long time, and I may be only a few minutes. And I might want to chat if I find something interesting. Have a chat. Over here. It's more centrally located. And you can keep an eye on me. Stupid fools, the police. If they had my knowledge of the occult and this crystal ball, there'd be no need of detectives. In it, I can see anything. And there wouldn't be any crooks either. Because you could look in there and foresee what's at the end of the line for them. Might discourage them. Blood drips from two... anybody cross the roof. Maybe you ought to take another look at that crystal ball. Blood drips from two... What? Blood drips from two knives. But there will be twelve more. Fourteen people. Men and women. Rich and poor. I see fourteen people. And all of them are dying. Yes. When the last of the 14 is dead, the cycle will be complete. But now, now I see a 15. He is, he is. Well, mow me down. He's having his fortune told. Well, whatever we were doing, it's over now. What do you mean? Professor here was telling me some very interesting things when you crashed in and snapped him out of it. I don't believe it. I couldn't have told you anything. I don't even know what you're looking for. This is one of the things I'm looking for. And I found it without the help of your crystal ball. Under your mattress. You probably also put it there. The man I chased across your roof put it there. Well, I... I don't know anything about it. I never saw it before. Maybe if we take him down to headquarters and put him in another trance... It'll refresh his memory. Just a minute. You boys better stay around until we send somebody up to fix the lock on his door. Right. This is Professor Stalling, Tess. Take a good look and tell me if you ever saw him before. Of course you've never seen me before. Have you? Tess. Look at me, Tess. Are you sure you never saw him before? I I'm positive. Take him to headquarters. Have this checked by the medical examiner. We want to know if it's the weapon that killed Miss Stafford and Thomas. Okay, see you later. Let's go, Professor. Why? You acted like you were hypnotized. Oh, that's ridiculous. Say, who was that man, anyway? The professor? Uh-huh. He's a doctor of the mystic sciences and a darn good hypnotist. Well, do you think he's split face? You're the one to answer that. You saw a split face and owns his hallway. Oh, but that horrible scarred face. Discount that. It could be a trick makeup job. Oh, well, then Owens, too, could be split face. Exactly. And we're going right back to the Paradise Club. What for? I'm going to make Judith Owens producer, Father, so you can get a look at him, too.
You can bring our dinner now. Dinner? We are getting ready to close. Everybody in the kitchen is going home, but I can bring you some coffee if you wish. Let's have some. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. I've been trying to reach you at headquarters. Did you see anyone at the house tonight? Yes, but they saw us first. They got away. Oh, I'm so worried. I, I don't understand what's going on. Now Dad has disappeared. What makes you think so? Well, he hasn't come in all evening, and he's not at the house. Where was he supposed to go when he went out tonight? Uh, Dad likes to uh, gamble. Yes, he has a, a club uptown and, a, and an apartment. I suppose he was there last night, too? Maybe we should drop over there. Oh, no, no. No, it wouldn't do any good. He, he left there at 9 o'clock to come here. That's what worries me. Well, remember to give me the address. I may look in there later anyway. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I... Um, I'll go with you. Uh, my nose can stand a little powder, too. Oh, but I was going to make a telephone call. Did you think of someplace else your father might be? No, no, I was uh, going to call some friends and make arrangements to stay the night with them until I heard from Dad. Until we know who Split Face is, you wouldn't be safe even with friends. Anyway, it won't be necessary to make a call because I'm taking you with me. I'm under arrest? Let's call it protective custody. But, but jail. I didn't say anything about jail. Where then? Maybe I can take you home with me. Well, how cozy. I've got a housekeeper who's also a good cook. And we'd better be going. Yes, because we'll have to stop by my place long enough for me to pack a bag. Pack a bag? You going someplace? Mm-hmm. I've had a hankering for some of Mrs. Carraway's good cooking. Besides, I wouldn't want Miss Owens to be lonesome. Well, I've looked through all the books, and I can't find a picture of the man that jumped out of Owen's closet. Begin at page one of volume one and go through them again. You'll have to stop and study each picture. Well, I did. But you can't expect to find a picture that looks exactly as he did last night. We might have one that was taken before he got that scar. I just had a call from the mayor. He says he doesn't remember ever meeting Stafford or Thomas, and only knows Steve Owens vaguely as being a nightclub operator. You know, I think Owens is split face. Didn't Dick show you a picture of him? No, for the simple reason that there aren't any. Owens' daughter says he has an aversion to having pictures taken. Believes it's bad luck. Strange his disappearing right after split face jumped you in his house. It's strange how well his daughter's holding up. After all, she admits that he might be murdered. Hey, look. I found a surgical supply dealer who admits selling three of these to an undertaker on Pine Street. What would an undertaker want with a surgical instrument? They use them for post-mortems. We better both go right out there. You stay with the pictures, Tess. Business seems to be quiet. He can't be getting any split faces customers. Hey, maybe he's split face. Good afternoon. May I help you? Well, from the homicide squad. Oh, I'm sure there have been no irregularities. I have burial certificates. That's for all them. right. I just want you to take a look at this. Oh. A dealer says it's one of three he sold you recently. Yes. Yes, I believe it is. Strange. They all disappeared soon after I bought them. Do you think one of your employees stole them? No, no. I have a small establishment, and I do most of the work myself. Where did you keep the knives? I'll show you. I have as fine a collection of caskets as there is in the city. Well, congratulations. Uh -huh. Thank you. I do most of my work in here at night. And this door is frequently left open? Oh, yes. And I suppose if the telephone rings, you have to go into the front office to answer it, is that right? Yes. That would make it pretty easy for anyone to wait until you were called to the front office, then slip in and steal the knives. Yes. Yes, it would. Now, this is where I kept the knives. Careless of me, perhaps, but one doesn't expect thieves in a place like this. It is a strange place for a murderer to come for a weapon. A murderer? Oh, dear me, I, I am sorry. Did you ever know a man who calls himself Spitface? No. I can't believe Spitface would come here only to obtain a weapon. What do you mean? Maybe you were number one on his list. And some lucky accident frightened him away when he came to kill you. Wait a minute. What about Professor Starling? Do you know him? Oh, no, but... I read in the papers that one of the knives was found in his room. 
Isn't he the murderer? I don't know. Goodbye, Mr. Dethridge. I shall not speak except on advice of counsel. I hope you boys haven't been annoying the professor. <laughs> the shoe's on the other foot. He's got me ready to confess to anything. How long have they been questioning you? Time and space are beyond human conception. Leave them with me for a while. Right. Okay. Relax, Professor Starling. Those fellows mean well. They just get too enthusiastic. Might as well relax. Let you and I play a word game. We'll get our minds off this for a minute. Don't class me with the morons who usually fall into your net. I know all about your word games. You told us the truth, the word can't trip you? Come on, Professor. Two minutes of play and I promise you won't be bothered for the rest of the day. Go ahead if you think it'll get you anything. I'll say a word, then you speak. The first word that comes into your mind. Light. Dark. Fish. Water. Snake. Grass. Hot. Cold. Cable. Chair. Knife. Knife. Surgeon. Blood. Stain. Extortion. Letter. Man. Women. Deathridge. Deathridge. There's no such word. What does it suggest? Nothing. Thanks ever so much, Professor. You've helped me more than you realize. Take care of the Professor. And leave orders he's not to be disturbed again today. Right. I'm getting groggy, Dick. I've been through these books a half a dozen times. Then skip it. As soon as I've had a word with Pat, we'll go out to the house for dinner. Hello, Pat. Hello. What did you get out of it, Pat? Well, he tripped over the critical words like uh, knife, extortion, death ridge. I think he knows our undertaking friend. At least by name. Anyway, I'm going to bring them face to face. Do you want me to bring death ridge down here? Yes. But we'll let the professor worry for an hour or so first. Get something to eat. Then pick up death ridge. Call me at the house as soon as you have him. Okay. See you later, Ted. Bye. Nobody's coming around here without me knowing it. Well, good work, Junior. What have you got to report? No strangers called today, or Miss Owens didn't go out. evening gown in the daytime. You were going to take me home after lunch so I could pack some dresses. I'm sorry. We'll go over there this evening. I don't want to go there at night. Then we'll go in the morning. I have nothing to wear in the morning. Dinner's ready. Anything wrong between you and your guest? No. Too bad. I'll see if I can't stir up something. Let's get dinner. I've uh, changed my mind. I'd like to go home and get my clothes now if you'll go with me. By the way, 14. What comes in groups of 14? What in the world are you talking about? The professor. I'm thinking about his cycle of 14. Men and women, rich and poor, all dying. Oh, well, that could be most anything, from a family dinner to uh, two poker games. Dick Tracy's residence. Oh, yes, Chief. Chief Brandon. Thanks. Hello, Chief. We still haven't heard anything from Pat, and Deathridge doesn't answer his phone. I'll run right over there. Right away. I'll have to run downtown, but I won't be long. What about my clothes? We'll get them later. Can I go with you, Dick? I'm depending on you to watch things here.
slug me from behind. That said you were on the way to the office. Deathridge dead, huh? Yeah. I came down to get the professor. I want to take him out there and show him Deathridge. Although this sure gives an airtight alibi. Not quite. What? The professor was released on a writ of habeas corpus. When? An hour or so ago. That's why I wanted to see you tonight. out before you talked anymore. Fourteen will die, you said. But you were wrong. Fifteen will die. Fifteen? What do you mean, I... Fifteen. Because I can't take a chance on you any longer. All those years, thinking. Thinking of nothing except paying them back. Get even. Do you think I'm going to let you stop me? I'm not trying to stop you. What have I done to stop you? I know about those rotten letters you've been writing. I didn't care. Until they brought the cops to your door. I admit that I wrote them, but it was an easy way to get the money, and it didn't hurt you any, not as long as you were going to kill them anyway. I'll give you half the money. I got a thousand from Thomas, and now there's death rich. You'll pay. No, there isn't death rich. I paid him a visit tonight. Funny. When he saw me, he looked just like you look now. No. No, don't. Don't be frightened. This knife is very sharp. It won't hurt. Not like when I got this face. It wasn't done so nice. And besides, people won't have to look at you. I'm turned sick at the sight of you. No, it's no good killing me. She saw you. She knows you. She'll identify you. See, what's all this nonsense about me telling you who Splitface is? I'll come to that in just a moment. The professor was the extortionist, true enough. It totals a thousand dollars, and it's made up of the exact number of fives, tens, and twenties that Wilbur Thomas drew from the bank. The professor and Splitface were partners? I doubt it. But the professor knew Splitface, maybe from prison, and he was wise to him. He saw a chance to pick up some money. Well, what's all this got to do with me telling you who Splitface is? The professor said that 14 people, men and women, rich and poor, were marked for murder. Did he make any statement before he died? But 14 people, in such varied financial circumstances, and of both sexes, would have to become associated in only one place that I can think of. That would be a jury box. Twelve jurors and two alternates. 
Did you ever serve on a jury in a criminal trial, Your Honor? Well, uh, yes. Can you remember the year you served as a juror? Well, I was in the grocery business. Now, let me think. It was the year we moved from Larchmont to... Can you remember who was being tried? Well, I recall the case perfectly. The, the, the defendant was a criminal. He stabbed his sweetheart to death. That sounds like the Alexis Banning case. Now it all comes back to me. Alexis Banning is the name. He was crazy then. Why? When we brought in the verdict, he screamed he'd kill us all. Put out a general alarm for Alexis Banning. He is split face. <laughs> news bulletin. The police have identified the maniac killer who has been terrorizing the city. He is Alexis Banning, alias Splitface. Well, he was convicted after of that, there should be no objection to my leaving this charming little jail. People are asked to be on the lookout. No, I'm sure it'll be all right. Only if your father decides to come out of hiding, it would be nice if he'd get in touch with Mr. Tracy. Well, good night. Good night. I've got a phone, Dick. I'll talk to him. I want to report on his house guest. Okay. If you want me, I'll be up in the lab. I'm checking some fingerprints on Billy Brown's piggy bank. Looks like we got his old man red-handed this time. Uh, Mr. Tracy, please. Hello, Dick. This is Ted. Oh, you guessed that, huh? What's the matter? This is Splitface, Tracy. Splitface, do you hear? Call off your cops and quit trying to interfere if you ever want to see a girl alive again. Junior can hang on. Good. Split face grab test. Come on. Hi. Calling. Attention all cars. Calling all cars. Look for a black sedan with a 10-year-old boy riding the rear bumper. towards the waterfront. Thanks.
for anything. Just playing. I play on this old board all the time. Say, I know you now. I saw you through the window at Tracy's. Now nah, you don't want to run away. So he hit my car and came along. That's fine. You just doubled my grip on Tracy. Well, town. I'm afraid we missed one of Junior's clues. I don't think so. There's some old abandoned docks along here. Maybe split place was heading for them. Now, if Tracy does what I say, you've got nothing to worry about. I'll be back in a minute. I warn you, don't try to get away. Junior, how did you get here? I'm on the back of the car. Oh, you shouldn't have.
Sure. Yes, Chief. He's safely locked up. And photographed this time. No, the scar was real. He got it in a fight with another convict. Served two extra years for it. Right. Thanks. Good night, Chief. Okay, Tess, I'm through with the report. Let's eat. Eat? You didn't say that a moment too soon. I'm dying of starvation. Come on, Junior. Disentangle yourself from those guns. Hey, Dick, a taxi driver was just shot and tossed out of his own cab on 18th and Main. I'm sorry. Will you take Junior home? Here we go again. Come on, Junior. 